Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to discuss a geometric interpretation of complex numbers. So in this topic, we're going to review graphs of functions and the Cartesian plane, and then we will introduce the idea of the complex plane, a means of visually representing complex numbers. We'll also describe the real and imaginary lines and the left and right hand planes. Now, from elementary school, you already know how to represent the integers as equally spaced points. Also, you can find where a rational number appears on that line. And later on in secondary school, you were introduced to real numbers, including the irrationals. And once again, you can estimate approximately where a value like pi would appear on such a representation. Now, question, how are we going to interpret a complex number alpha plus j beta, where alpha is real and beta is real? So these two are real numbers and the second is multiplied by the imaginary unit j equal to the square root of negative one. Well, let's go back and consider the representation of x and y when we're plotting or graphing functions. So let's say we have a function and we're plotting it. y is a function of x. So for every value of x, the function has a y value and we can plot all of those points. Now, any point where y is equal to 0 is said to lie on the x-axis, and similarly, any point where x is equal to 0 is said to lie on the y-axis. Similarly, um, a two-dimensional vector could be viewed on such a plane. So given the two-dimensional vector x, y, we could plot that point on the plane where the first coordinate tells us how far in to the right, if it's positive, left if negative, and the second coordinate tells us how far above or below the x-axis we are. Here's another point, 0 0.3 to the right and negative 0 0.7 or 0 0.7 down. Any vector where the second coordinate is 0 is said to be on the x-axis, and any vector where the first coordinate is 0 is said to lie on the y-axis. Now, this entire plane is called the Cartesian plane when we are representing vectors. Well, we're going to plot or represent or interpret the complex number alpha plus j beta in the exact same way that we represent a two-dimensional vector alpha beta. So again, remember, a complex number is a single value. It's a value like a real number or an integer. It doesn't have two separate parts. It is, in fact, one value that happens to have a real component, which may or may not be zero, and an imaginary component that also may or may not be zero. It is not like a two-dimensional vector, which is more like one real number and then a second real number. Now, this representation in this format is said to be called the complex plane. Let's go a little bit more into depth into what the components are. Now, a complex number with a zero imaginary part is said to lie on the real axis. So any point on that line is said to be real and it has a zero imaginary part. So for example, 0 0.9 plus j times zero, or just 0 0.9. Now, Remember, a value like z is equal to 1.2 plus j times 0 is still a complex number, even though it is also real. 
just like one half is still a real number even though it is also rational. A complex number with zero real part is said to lie on the imaginary axis, and such numbers are called imaginary. So, for example, here we see 0 minus j times 1.8, or just negative j times 1.8. alpha plus j beta does not lie on either axis, we just plot it so that the real component lines up with the appropriate value on the real axis, and the imaginary component lines up with the corresponding value on the imaginary axis. So for example, here we have z is equal to 0 0.8 plus j times 1.2. Similarly, at the origin, we have 0 plus j times 0, or just zero. And finally, here we have the point 0 0.6 minus j times 2.1. So as you can see, every single point on the plane here will have a, will represent a different complex number, and every complex number is represented by some point on this plane. Now, we're going to also classify complex numbers based on the sign of the real part. So, given the complex number z is equal to alpha plus j beta, if alpha is strictly greater than zero, we will say that z lies in the open right-hand plane. If alpha is greater than or equal to zero, we will say z lies in the closed right-hand plane. That is, it's the open right-hand plane together with its boundary, which is the imaginary line. Recall the concept of an open interval from secondary school. So, for example, the open interval 0 to 1 does not contain either the boundary points 0 or 1. Similarly, the open right-hand plane does not contain any of the points of the boundary, which happen to be the entire imaginary line. Similarly, given z is equal to alpha plus j beta, if alpha is l strictly negative, we will say that z lies in the open left-hand plane. And if alpha is less than or equal to zero, we will say z lies on the closed left-hand plane. All right. So, in this topic, you now understand the concept of the complex plane and how we can represent a complex number on that plane. You should now be able to take any complex value and plot it on that plane. You're also aware of terms such as the real line, the imaginary line, or the real axis or imaginary axis, it doesn't really matter, and the open and closed left and right hand planes. These are important concepts that you will use in subsequent classes. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!